Welcome to Flickering Myth Gaming Chat. I'm Alan Christian. I'm Gerald James. We've got to talk about the Summer Game Fest, Gerald. Yes, Jeff Keeley's Jeff Keeley's Summer Game Fest. I don't know why he didn't just put his name over the title, like like he's a director or something. For as much as he talked about his vision throughout I mean, this presentation, no one else is doing this. So you know, I I'll give it that. I'll give him that. It's Chief, fine. everybody else is doing this. <laughs> like oh, this is this like is who? like like who name three. This is this is what E three is. <laughs> Like, yes, he got a few different, like a, a smattering of publishers together in one presentation. It's not like that's never been done before, but this is his vision. All right. All right. All right. You're just, you're, you're a big old grouch today. That's fine. That's I'm fine. not a big old grouch. This isn't much yeah. of a vision. Like, like you want to awkwardly stand on stage all alone doing terrible interviews, talking to people about, about upcoming skins and games. And then like, I don't know. I don't know. This, we're starting off on the wrong foot. We're starting off on the wrong yeah. foot. <laughs> um, but no, I, I was... Uh, I, <laughs> needless to say, I'm unimpressed with Jeff Keeling's vision. I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> um, <clears throat> right off the bat, let's just start with how this show opened up. This show opened up as it was happening. Okay. As it was happening, I messaged Gerald like after the second one, and I said, they're over two. And he he didn't necessarily feel that way. But looking back on this list of things that happened here, fairly strong opening. Yeah. I um, mean, look, yet again, I, like you're not going to have, you know, it's not going to be home run after home run. And even though no. these weren't all for me. Dude, these were all base hits, there. though. That's <laughs> the problem. <laughs> like, and yeah, there's a few RBIs here. It's like, <laughs> not lie. I'm not going to lie. Um, not everything was a strikeout. Um, <clears throat> we opened up with Tiny Tina's Wonderland, mm -hmm. which okay, you feel strongly about this. I not as strongly as you might think, but yes, okay, I, I don't think it's terrible. Um, I do actually love the idea of because you know, Borderlands, I won't say it's stale because we had to wait so long between two and three, but being able to say, hey, this isn't Borderlands, but it's Borderlands they mm -hmm. can actually go through and change up enough to you know maybe make it fresh enough for someone like me who's been playing these all along yeah, and sure. hopefully pulling new players look um i find this boring uh for me personally not interesting mm -hmm. to me but i will say <clears throat> i mean because in my head i'm just like gearbox do something different but then i remembered all the times that gearbox did something different and you know what do the same thing i don't care because <laughs> the last times you tried something different didn't really pan out for any of us um uh duke nukem forever um uh, aliens colonial marines you know stick to making uh borderlands game that's fine yeah that's fine. i'm not going to defend them <laughs> <laughs> Just not yeah, stay in that corner. That's perfectly fine for me. The people that enjoy Borderlands games enjoy them. I can continue to ignore them, and you never have to branch out into things that I might care about again. So, by all means, yeah. The next week, next comes Metal Slug. It, it, it looks like a Metal Slug game. We're just like mm -hmm. Metal Slug, Metal Slug. Why are we doing Metal Slug? It's Metal Slug Tactics, which. You know, I like games like this. Uh, I was looking at it again before we started. I'm like, oh, I'll probably play that for free. <laughs> you know, or, yeah. If or it shows up in like, if it shows up on Game Pass, or I can grab it for ten bucks one day, yeah. I'll probably check it out because I do like tactics style games. Yeah, I like games and, like this, and I like Metal Slug. But like, I mean, Metal. My like for Metal Slug has nothing to do with why I might want to play this, other than maybe like the art style. Yeah, I mean, I do like the art style. That's what yeah. I was about to say. The art style is the mm -hmm. only thing that really is metal slug in this. Mm -hmm. So I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, and then we get some Jeff Goldblum. Because Jeff Keeley has to remind you that he has some famous friends. Yeah, Jurassic World Evolution 2. You build a Jurassic Park. Uh, it's, a, it's a park building. Somewhere, yeah. yeah. Um, which is... Pure hubris, uh, pure hubris to, <laughs> to, to, to build Jurassic Parks. I think that kind of misses the point, but okay. All right. Uh, I guess people like the first one. 
this yeah. was not even a gameplay trailer, but I guess, you know, what's the gameplay going to be? It's fine. Whatever. Underwhelming. Why did we drag Jeff Goldblum out for this, for the most awkward delivery? Like, and I say awkward, not in like, a, you know, his bread and butter kind of way, but mm-hmm. in the like, what are you doing here kind of way? <laughs> um, <clears throat> fine. 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 Nothing's popping here. And you'll mm-hmm. find that you'll find a trend. Um, <clears throat> number four, according to the GameSpot list, we have a very um, a very subtitled conversation with Hideo Kojima uh, that I didn't get to catch all of because I <laughs> wasn't able to. Uh, it wasn't, yeah, that was the problem. Not that not that he was speaking. It was like, oh no, you can't read. Time. No, uh, I was I was not able to focus purely on the video at the time, so I'm not really sure what the conversation was about. I do know, yeah, somebody <laughs> brought up 9/11. No, actually, not sure the, the, the context. conversation the conversation was actually really charming because he was like, "I'm gonna have to rethink how I create games. I'm tired of predicting tragedies." So, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's like that's fair. It's all your fault. That is reasonable. <clears throat> that is reasonable. But then, you know, we get a little bit of a, a back and forth just to remind everybody that Jeff Keighley knows Hideo Kojima. And by the way, by the way, he was in Death Stranding, which gets a director's cut. It's a big announcement. It's coming to the PS5. Um, that's not nothing. That's actually no, I, I was one, excited one of the cooler things here. Um I've been anticipating it. I, I honestly expected because we have heard nothing. I expected that there would just be a patch to make it run 60 frames per second. That's kind of what I was figuring. And I hope this is like an upgrade and not like make everybody buy it again. But calling it a director's cut sounds like they're going to make everybody buy it again. But you know. yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we're not going to go through everything because, oh my God, we'd be here all night um, or at least an hour and a half. Uh, this is where the presentation to me drops off a cliff um, and never quite recovers. Some people might argue that the ending, you know, sticks to the landing. There are good things here. There are interesting things here, but we get things like new details for Call of Duty, Cold War, Black Ops, and Warzone Season 4. Yeah. Okay. Like, honestly, I, I, I do kind of wish that they could cut out everything that was showing me upcoming stuff for existing games and yes oh get this down to a sweet 45 minutes oh my god this this my biggest problem with this presentation is that it mm. disrespects my time wholeheartedly there is a fucking sonic orchestra performance in this remember when we were talking about that orchestra the sonic orchestrated thing and i guess that they're the game, summer games fest is going to be hosting that live event or some such thing so we got a little taste and then jeff Keeley informs us that he does in fact like orchestra music <laughs> um i mean we get things like new among us modes and we get a release window for solar ash which is Cool. We saw Solar Ash first at like the big PS5 reveal, right? Mm. Uh, and that's the new game from the Hyperlight Drifter guys. And I'm into that. Uh, a release window is um, really something worth putting in this big presentation. Now, uh, Salt and Sacrifice got kind of tucked in the middle of that. That's like the follow up to Salt and Sanctuary. Mm. Looks good. Looks like a follow up to Salt and Sanctuary. Okay with it. Um, we don't want to go over everything. Two Points Campus does not have a sonic mode as far as we can tell. Uh, <laughs> there's just uh, most of the, a lot of the really good things that, that are here aren't the world premieres that we were promised. Uh, like, I mean, yeah, Monster Hunter Stories 2 looks like a well put together game. We've seen it. Yet again, yet again, I'm going to have to say, if you've been watching these long enough, yeah, this is the world premieres to expect from Jeff Keighley. <laughs> this, I, I'm not sure what you went in expecting, but no, this is about what I expect. I do recall, uh, I do recall in our E3 predictions conversation mm-hmm. that somebody, somebody touted this as a possible E3 killer. If this goes well, maybe we don't have yeah. E3 next year. 
No, they they talked about three things I care about, which is probably more than most of the conferences I'm going to sit through for the rest of the week. Well, fantastic. So, yeah. That's good, yeah. Gerald. Um, you know, just I, I try not to dig into – if we're going to talk about something, I try not to dig into too many other people's opinions mm-hmm. just because I don't want to, like, accidentally parrot something that's not necessarily my own thing. I don't have too much of a risk of that. Um but I still try to stray away from it. But I did check a couple things just to, you know, see what the general feeling of it was. And mm-hmm. I don't think I'm alone here. <clears throat> I think, I think that the overwhelming response is mild disappointment and very little excitement. That's <laughs> Welcome to that, video games. I was going to say, that's every <laughs> press conference ever, man. I don't know. Fair. Yeah, again, like this is par for the course. Is this the worst press conference ever? No. Is this made slightly more unbearable by Jeff Keeley touting himself, reminding us that he is, in fact, in Death Stranding, uh, that you can get some Jeff Keeley branded bullshit and that this is his vision? Yes, that makes it worse. It makes it worse. No one in any other press conference ever tells me about their vision for hawking games, for hawking Amazon games. Surprisingly, not as much. There was a little like front loaded, like talking about Amazon gaming, but Mm -hmm. you know, after that, it kind of dropped off, uh, which is decent for you know uh, a sponsored event like this. Uh, we get things like fall, fall, fall guy skins. We get a movie trailer. We get a movie trailer for a movie called Free Guy, starring Ryan Reynolds as an NPC who finds out he's in a game. It's like the Matrix for dummies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah, like- again. It's a salt it, it might be like Tron 2 for dummies, come to think of it, which is a hilarious sell because <laughs> Tron 2 is kind of for dummies. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't care about the movie, but I didn't want to rip my hair out having to watch a trailer for it. It's just, no, it's weird because it is one of those fine. movies I've been hearing about for like three years now, but you know, things happened last year. So. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, we are in that weird space where it's just like, here's an announcement. And we're like, did this come out already? <laughs> for yeah. a lot of things, like, no, no, it did not. I've um, been seeing like standees for Black Widow for the past year and a half. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We had a big announcement. Like, it's not quite the penultimate announcement because I think that was the Evil Dead, the game, which is a Dead by Daylight slash Friday the 13th kind of ripoff. But yeah. Uh, I'm enough of an Evil Dead fan that I would like to play it when it comes to Game Pass. Um, But before that, we get an announcement that there is a new studio run by the guys that uh, uh, Dave Anthony and Jason Blundell, who uh, they worked with Treyarch back in the day. And then, you know, back when those guys were making cool things. And then they got rubbed into making a bunch of Call of Duty shit. Um, <clears throat> they formed a new studio. I don't even know. Deviation Games, that's the name of it. Yeah. And they're working on a PlayStation exclusive. Huge. Huge. And that's, that's cool news. That is press release news. Um, yeah, it's press release news, not press conference news. If they like, showed up and were like, oh, and here is, you know, here's a, early alpha footage of yes. what we're working on. Here's how you find. Yeah, here's an idea. But you, just being like, hey, we're going to fly you down to wherever Jeff's hanging out these days. And we just need you to go on stage, act a little awkward and be like, yeah, we're making a game. And oh, yeah, it's for PlayStation. That was a weird pool. Like, mm-hmm. I would rather watch a second trailer for a free guy than <laughs> sit through that. Dark Alliance looks cool. I didn't particularly no. care about that presentation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it does not look cool. I'll you stop don't think so? there. No, because they're using the name Dark Alliance, which was a better to, game. Yeah. Put, put it lightly, a Diablo clone to be like, oh, no, you can do four player co op. Oh, wait, you wanted to do like loot and stuff? No. 
you've just got like four established heroes you can play as, and it's just the hack and slash. Yeah, it kind of looked like Gauntlet to me. It's not it's not Dark Lions, but it kind of looked like yeah. Gauntlet to me, and I'm a Gauntlet fan, so I'm not sold. I'm not. They're probably not getting my money, but yeah, you could do worse things with the Dark Alliance name, I guess. You could do better things with it, like you know, make Dark Alliance, <laughs> make yeah. Dark Alliance, but you know, whatever. Imagine that. <laughs> But at least, you know, we're getting re-releases for too much money. Or we already got those, right? Uh, well, it's the first one. I think they said the second one is being worked on. Oh, I'll buy it on sale. Yeah. yeah. Uh, new skins for Overwatch too. Like, I mean, I can keep complaining like, about this. Like, You've got to have Overwatch 2 there. Why? But, I mean... Because it, it's it's a big game from a big publisher mm-hmm. that's not out yet. So that's something that's, you know, trying to hype something up. This was not the way to hype that up then. No. Being like, let's see what they look like. Oh, wait. Oh, you wanted to see gameplay? <laughs> no. Yeah. Because, no. like, all right. Like, I had to check after this because mm-hmm. I was like, I didn't think Overwatch 2 was out yet. And they saw <laughs> they presented this like an add-on to something that we've all been playing for years. Yeah, no, it's just what the characters are going to look like in the new game. <laughs> cool. like, I had to double check because I'm not the biggest, uh, like, I'm not the biggest fan. I don't really follow it, but I was like, mm, I didn't think that came out. Maybe it did. Maybe I missed it in, in yeah. this uh, time void of a year. I was like, no, no, I didn't. <laughs> Is there anything we're missing here before we get to the, the, the big reveal, which we've already, uh, uh spoken of a few times uh like, quick touch we never brought up the vampire masquerade blood hunt oh yeah that, that one it still looks like a proof of concept trailer so i'm not super stoked yeah but it looks for a the longest janky. time for the longest time when someone would ask me hey pitch me a dream project to me it was an open world game set in the world of darkness setting so if this can pull off even half of that i am all in I am excited for it, but I don't have the highest hopes. Yeah. But that being said, I did want to mention that, you know, not just brush that one off. Yeah. It, I will. I watched that as that was happening. I was like, Gerald's so into this right now. <laughs> I was like, it looks Bobo, but Gerald's happy. Yeah. <laughs> um. <clears throat> Honestly, you know what? You've turned me around. Mm-hmm. Nothing here excited me, but you've kind of turned me around more than it. Like, this isn't the worst thing that ever happened. It's not an A3 killer. <laughs> as much as I hate to say it, the worst thing about this conference is there wasn't enough cringe to make up like a really good compilation video on YouTube. The big announcement was Elden Ring. I mean, mm-hmm. the big Thank reveal you, was night. Elden Ring. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Um, <laughs> looks fine. Looks good. Uh, like these games, it's a from software game. These games aren't my jam. Uh, from software's difficulty trades more in time than skill, and that's just doesn't do it for me. Uh, but people love it, and people say great things about them. And I believe that they are incredibly well made games by incredibly talented people. And I can see why this is exciting to to folks who were. <laughs> You know, from software people that is the nicest thing that I'm going to say about this game because Great. other than that, it looks like you know fairly generic fantasy from software game. It's a is that unfair? Yeah, is it a little bit? Yeah, like saying it's a generic. I mean, yes, it does. I will admit the aesthetic is in line with like the Dark Souls games and whatnot, sure. but. I don't know. Like this is a highly yeah, again, a highly anticipated release. Uh-huh. The fact that it's going to be open world, that's you know, that is new territory for them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so being able to see more of an exploration side and everything like that. Uh, also, I think that you might be talking about the difficulty a little too soon. I want to say because of the name attached with George R. R. Martin and everything, I think this is going to be their biggest to scale game mm-hmm. to date. Um, and because of that, I'm thinking they're probably going to tone down the difficulty a little bit. Maybe. Yeah, I'm not specifically talking about this. I'm just talking about the overall affection for from software games. Mm-hmm. Like, I get it. It's not, it's not 
the kind of challenge that necessarily appeals directly to me. Um, but this, you know, it looks fine. And if we see more from it and if the open world, but like big open world fantasy, got to be honest, not breaking ground, you know? Um, am I wrong? Like, I mean, no, it's, it's not in your genre. Doing. Yeah, sure. It's very talented. <laughs> I, 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 I like big open world fantasy. People. I don't know. I, I don't Me want either. Any, I, don't I don't know want... what video games you like. <laughs> you I do don't... know what video games I like. I, I don't name know what too. I want from these people either. I very much said, like, I can see why people are excited. Doesn't do anything for me. And you're kind of coming at me like, but it could be this and this. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm not sure what you're selling. So, no, I'm excited for it. Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, <laughs> I was trying to get out of the way and let you have it. <laughs> yeah no i i don't know i don't know um no i i think it's gonna be good i'm glad to finally see something on it um the release date being so soon in like january of next year yeah that surprised i wasn't me. expecting that no because that's seven months out yeah and yeah. i i kind of love that in a world which yeah of course they teased it uh maybe two years ago now but I kind of love the idea of just keeping everything close to the vest until you've actually got something. Yes. Much yeah. prefer it. It's, the, it's for the most part, the Nintendo method. And uh, that I much prefer that to like the, the extended hype. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> take a note from that team deviance or whatever your name is. <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't have to get us hyped about you existing. Yeah. Um, get us hyped about what's happening. Yeah. Uh, so no, I I loved that this was the like capstone to the show because yeah, it's a good one. Jeff Keeley can't sneeze on Twitter without anyone's being like, "What are you talking about, Elden Ring?" <laughs> so finally, finally, he gets to move out from under that rock, and mm -hmm. yeah. You know, Go cuddle with Kojima some more. Yeah. <laughs> so, to me, this and this might seem like an obvious statement, but this mm -hmm. reveal did more for this presentation than this presentation did for this reveal. Yeah, and that's yeah. fine. Except that, like, it felt like such a slog to get to this that. Um, <clears throat> Everything else just felt like, I don't know, a bunch of anticlimax. It felt like a chore. And I feel like this might have actually done better if you had like something else in the middle to prop this tin up or if you put this in the middle, because this was the expected thing. Look, I mean, come on. In the middle, you had the announcement of Final, or not Final Fantasy, uh, Fast and Furious cars and, you know, Rocket League. Yeah, know. and a near character what more can going into going into Fall Guys. <laughs> That's weird and kind of fucking cool. So I'm here for that one. <laughs> sure. sure. Like that, that's not something I would have ever expected to see a combo of. Like I would expect Doom, which has happened before mm -hmm. year. So that yeah. one was a little weird. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm just tired of these games as a service their whole thing now is look what thing you like we put in this thing <laughs> look this okay this is just a bargain bin of a games presentation though and we have to acknowledge that this is like if <laughs> this is like if jack in the box got the toy deal for the lion king <laughs> like the, 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 I don't the, know the fast I, food promotion. I really hate to say it, but I feel like I've wasted more time with like uh, Bethesda Land, and if you remember that presentation, and um, pretty much every Ubisoft one I've ever watched, with the exception of the <clears> one time where they're like, "Yeah, maybe we're gonna make uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2 So I, that's why, like, I'm I'm comparing it to these. And as much as I hate to say it, just because they had three things I was excited for, that puts them above most. Okay. I, I think what we're going to find out this year, what we're mm -hmm. going to find out over this, the, these next four or five days is that 
Alan only watches highlight reels, except for Nintendo presentations, apparently. <laughs> I mean, you talk, you're talking to me about, uh, oh, you're like, I've sat through worst Ubisoft presentations. Like, why are you sitting through Ubisoft presentations? <laughs> I take off vacation time every year for this, baby. <laughs> This is what I do. Gerald, I, I think we need to find you something better to do with your vacation time. It's been a great conversation. <laughs> join, us, <laughs> join us Sunday morning as we go over all the events of Saturday. Plus, if anything happens for Friday, you know, for Friday, we'll talk about it there as well. <clears throat> you got any closing remarks on Jeff Keeley's big summer game grab bag? No. Big summer bargain bin. All right. <laughs> Agree with gaming's chat. Uh, I'm Alan Christian. I'm Gerald James. Let us know if we missed anything uh, from this presentation that you were really jazzed about. Let us know if you think I'm an asshole, as people are wont to do. Uh, do all that in the comments down below. Like if you you like. If you you know don't, then I know that dislike's coming. But yeah, <laughs> we'll see you in the next one.